He says, figure out how you can afford it. How can you do something? Figure out how you can do something. So over my lifetime, most of the projects I, I've started, I've, I've never had any money. I, I like not having money because it forces me to think. I get creative. I have to educate myself. I have to talk to rich guys. Hey, how'd you do this? How'd you do that? How'd you do that? And what has happened to me, I mean, I just turned 72. I've never needed money. Because if I need money, I figure out how to raise it. So today, you guys have crowdfunding and all that. I mean, I don't know what that stuff is. But it's easy to say I can't afford it. All the poor people say I can't afford it. All the poor people say, well, it's tax the rich. So the reason I make more money is because it's not what I'm doing what I love. I do sometimes what I hate so I can have the assets that I love. I love having a business. You know, if I didn't have a business, you wouldn't be here. Darren wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have a CEO and president. I wouldn't have accountants. I wouldn't have attorneys. So the business affords me the lifestyle I want. And then I invest in real estate. I've never gone past a real piece of, a piece of land or a building I did, not, I did not love. And then what most people invest in from there is paper. And that's fine. That's stocks, bonds, mutual funds, savings, ETFs. Not my game. I don't love it. I actually hate it. But these guys, it's perfect for them to have paper, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETF, and all that, because their focus over here. They want to do what they love. They want to climb the ladder. They want their career. They want this. I'm going to become president. You know, that's not what I wanted. I wasn't doing what I loved. I had to learn what I didn't want to learn. I had sometimes to do what I hated. I had to learn about taxes. I had to learn about debt. I had to take classes. I had to learn about insurance. So I was doing a lot of things I hated doing so I could come over here. These guys never do this. They live their passion. I want my passion. The difference between passion is greedy. Purpose is for other people. So my purpose was to come over here so I could serve more people. So I have employees here and all this. I don't buy stocks, bonds, mutual funds because as a professional investor, I can create my own assets. In my world, like I said, I see people, they chase shiny objects. And what a shiny object means is, you know, when you're fishing, you throw a lure out, this little shiny object goes, and the fish comes and, and they jump it. That's what most people do. Bitcoin today is a shiny object. I'm not saying you can't make a lot of money in it. But most people are chasing shiny objects. They want to make money. They're not building an asset here. The thing, the reason they don't do here, this is the highest risk. Now, this is what I know. The higher the risk, the more education it takes. For example, if I wanted to learn, and I flew, and if I wanted to just fly my little Cessna 172 around the place, not much risk in that. But when I had to go to Vietnam to fly, the risk went up. I had to study harder, become better, work harder. The reason most people stay in paper, 401ks, IRAs, and chasing shiny objects like Bitcoin is because they don't want to take the risk here. They're huge. You've got to study. That's why we have a Rich Dad's Education, Rich Dad's Coaching. All of you guys are allowed to take courses and all this. If you come here, it takes no intelligence to be here. It takes no intelligence to buy Bitcoin. I mean, I have four four Bitcoin, no, five Bitcoin. It didn't take, you know, just, I don't have to do anything. Over here, I have, to do, I have to know a lot. Over here, I have to know a lot. I have to study. So if you want to chase shiny objects like the stock market and all that, you can make, get rich there. It's really easy to get in here. It's really hard here. Most employees can't stand that because they don't have any money. Like, you know, coming here, I was doing fine over here because I didn't have much money. Because the government takes all your money anyway, right? 40% yeah. in taxes because nobody's going to sue you. You come over here, they sue. Okay? So I had to learn about lawsuits. I hated it, but I learned it. So the big mistake for young people is I'm going to do what I love, which is fine over here. But what do you love the most? What I loved my freedom. And I know it sounds greedy, but I love making money. I'd rather have a lot of money than no money. I've been both. I've been broke, I've been down, 
everything, but I'd rather have a lot of money. So it was worth my purpose to get over here. The big mistakes I see young people making is here. You know, they think about what they want to do, what they love. And what I'm saying to you, the millennials right now, invest in what you love. There's a very big difference. In other words, think about this side first. One of the biggest mistakes, I still hear it today from young people, oh, I don't have to worry because I'm still young. Yeah, and that is death to most people because eventually you get old and then you're not young again. So it's a way of saying, when I talk about assets and liabilities, one of the most important things you have in your life is time. It's one of your greatest assets or it's your liability. And being, you know, I just turned 70 and I have friends who have nothing. I mean, they have zero. Now they made, they've made a lot of money, but they have nothing here. They have nice houses, nice cars, 16 wives, 19 kids. I don't know what they have, but you know what I mean? And, and being young is great, except it can be a liability to you. Because when you're young, you're just having a lot of fun and life's exciting, you know, it's new. So, as a time, but the thing is, this is the lesson today, is so many people spend their time focusing here. They want to make a lot of money. And I can hear it in their words. They say, oh, I want a career. This is career. Okay, or I'm going to start my own business. And this is the chart here, which we've seen. This is the cash flow quadrant, book number two. So I go in, so when the markets crashed in 2008, the whole economy almost came down. Kim and I borrowed. $300 million. The average guy can't borrow a million. But if you have the right financial education, which is what the cash flow game is about, then I can borrow as much money as I like. So today, Kim and I are on about $600 million in debt. The average guy goes, that's terrible. But as you know from Rich Dad, Poor Dad, there's good debt and bad debt. Bad debt. Yeah. Most Young people, or I should I say, short-sighted people, they think this is it or this is it. But this is the one here. So when I was your age, I knew that the assets I wanted to acquire, the richest people own businesses over here. These guys are small business, self-employed. You're self-employed if you can't stop working. I stopped working years ago because I have businesses. Very big difference. It was painful, but I got there. So number one is a business. So when I was in my 20s, I knew I was going to do what it would take to school, study, learn about taxes, debt, insurance, accounting, lawsuits, and all this through business. Next is real estate. I love real estate. But most people can't do what I do because they don't have a business. It's catch-22. They don't have enough money to get over here. Your mom just made that switch issues other people's money. I'll leave you one last word that's very, very important for people to understand at a young age. And the word is called liquidity. The reason this is better for most people is because it's liquid. You can buy a stock, you make a mistake, you get out. You buy an ETF, you make a mistake, you get out. It's not, it's not, it's good, it's important. The moment you go into real estate, you're not liquid. That's why you got to be smarter going in. Because if you make a mistake, you can't get out. And you buy a bad piece of property, you write it down. And the same as businesses, you're in there, you're solid, you can't get out. Like if Rich Dad, you know, Rich Dad's gotten in trouble, you know, with money, all businesses are, I can't quit. Employees just quit and they leave. They, they run like little rats, you know. But if you're in here or here, you can't get out. So that's why liquidity is crucial. It's very important, which means that's why I have Rich Dad's coaching, Rich Dad's education, all our programs and all this. I think it doesn't excite me, you know? It doesn't. This excites me. So I invest in what I love rather than do what I love. And these guys do what they love 
but most of them never get over here. You know, this is like Steve Jobs, Zuckerberg, uh, Bezos of Amazon, and they have all the money in the world. That was my plan. Just most people don't have it. They want a job, they want job security, they want a paycheck, they want a 401k. And that's why they don't get to come here. That's why they don't get to come over here. Nothing right or wrong, you know. I don't ever want it to be here. I knew when I was your age I wanted to come here, but the higher the risk, the higher the returns, but also the higher dedication, education, and study you have to go through. So today, and I'm making millions and millions, I make more in a day than most many people make in a lifetime, but it was worth it. If I lose, sometimes yes, but it was worth it.